Have we forgotten about front wheel drive? Maybe our dads were right after all. Those fail wheel drive things are slow and boring. They're nose heavy and they understeer. You can't even do a power slide. That ain't a real sports car. But is that really the case? Can front wheel drive be just as sporty, if not faster, than everything else? Today we're gonna look at one mighty fine example. We're going bumper to bumper on the record setting Time Attack Spoon Sports FD2 Civic Type R. Time Attack is the latest and greatest upcoming motorsport to come out of Japan. Some say it started in the mid 90s at the Tsukuba circuit, but others say it's been around since the 60s. Either way, Time Attack kicked off in the US in 2004 with the Super Lap Battle at Button Willow Raceway in Southern California. The format is basically the same all over the world. Every car is given only a handful of laps on a road course in a race against the clock. The winning car is the one that runs the quickest lap time during the event. Since there aren't many rules in the top classes, the fastest cars look outrageous with huge splitters and wings. While drifting is totally sick, maintaining grip is actually the fastest way through a corner. So you may think an all wheel drive beast like a GTR or an Evo would be the car to beat. And not that long ago, you'd be right. They were setting the best lap times. But as Time Attack became more popular and attracted more racers in all types of cars, a crazy thing started happening. Front wheel drive cars started getting really, really fast. If you've watched this episode of Up to Speed on Spoon, you'd know that they have a history of building bad AS Hondas. They're known for reliable endurance racing cars, but Aaron Wang and the Spoon Sports USA team at Go Tuning Unlimited saw an opportunity. What if they took what they knew and built a car for flat out track speed? So Spoon Japan sent two cars over here for them to try, an NSX and this Civic. After testing their team driver, my personal best friend and probably best man at my wedding, pro drifter Dai Yoshihara, who's also a super fast road racer, surprisingly picked the front wheel drive Civic because he thought it would be faster than the rear drive mid-engine exotic sports car. The result was a new global time attack front wheel drive lap record at Button Willow in 2015. And it did it without insane horsepower or mods. But how could this be? In totally stock form, a Civic Type R's K28 engine made about 200 Hertz And that just wouldn't cut it for an unlimited class time attack podium. They needed more power, baby. <laughs> Spoon didn't have the budget to build a thousand horsepower monster, so they went with some fairly light mods. When they got the car, it already had upgraded five zigging pistons and rods, but the block is just like it came from the Honda factory. Spoon added some Toto racing valves and valve springs and did a port and valve job on the head. But you know what's better? Even more power, baby! They threw on a Garrett GTX 35R turbo to give the engine a big old bump. Running a relative crap load of boost currently pushes out 520 horses, 387 pound feet of torque at the wheels. But when the car beat the record, it was only making around 480. That was about 200 horsepower less than most of his competitors. So Spoon used other go fast tricks to beat him. To move more weight off the nose and towards the middle of the car, the turbo was mounted as far back in the engine bay as they could manage. All the intake, turbo, and exhaust tubing is kept short and simple, and it has a sick K-tuned center feed intake manifold. That helps reduce weight and turbo lag while also improving throttle response and power. The position of the turbo meant that sending the four inch exhaust right out the front fender behind the wheel would be convenient. That wasn't as easy as it looks because it comes out of a structural part of the unibody. So so, team fabricator Chris Eimer had to add a special tube into the side of the car for the exhaust to pass through. Chris is also Dai's Formula Team Fabricator. In fact, Dai's entire BRZ Formula D team is also his entire Spoon Civic Time Attack team. Talk about a bunch of badasses. Rear drive, front drive, drifting, grip. These guys are good at everything. 
But back to that exhaust gas that I love huffing so much. It doesn't just dump straight out the side. It's precisely angled to integrate smoothly into the airflow around the Civic's body so as not to disrupt the car's aerodynamics. More about all that sick functional aero stuff and how I dump my own exhaust gases later. Spoiler alert, it's out my butt. It's also got all the typical mods you'd find on most turbo race cars to keep things running smoothly and reliably. A Gretti front mount intercooler chills down the air while a turbo smart blow off valve bleeds off excess boost. A Calsonic radiator keeps the engine cool. Yeah, Calsonic. Maybe you've heard of them. Maybe a certain blue R32 GTR. Does that jog your memory? The car's transmission has been a weak point before and Dai actually set the lap record without fourth gear. I'm so proud to call that guy practically my brother. James, stop telling people we are friends. To make the most of its comparatively low power spoon, had to make the Civic as light as they could. What's everyone's favorite way to save weight? My favorite way to save weight is that tasty carbon fiber, brother. Yeah, I love carbon fiber. <laughs> Exactly! Carbon fiber! The hood, the doors, the trunk lid, the rear side windows, half the taillights, and even the headlights were swapped out with carbon fiber reproduction. Now its eyes are as black as my soul while saving 12 pounds. The battery is from a company called Anti-Gravity and it only weighs three pounds. The weight loss program means that this Civic now tips the scales at just 2,300 pounds, 700 pounds lighter than stock. With the power to weight ratio maximized, the team turned to handling. The body is seam welded and the cage is stitch welded to the body. There are strengthening gussets added to the frame rails at the front and the cage was welded to the rear strut towers. KW, competition, three-way motorsports dampers were custom tuned just for the Type R and white line adjustable sway bars and five Segan billet aluminum adjustable arms help the team dial the handling in. Lightweight, 18 by 10 and a half inch thick. Titan 7 wheels wearing Yokohama slicks are on all four corners to put the widest, stickiest possible contact patches onto the pavement. And although the car is pretty light, it still needs beefy Brambo six piston calipers. Even those of us who live the fastest lives need to slow down and take a vacay to Hawaii once in a while. Mahalo, baby. For those of you wondering why they aren't using their own super rare spoon brake kit, well, Rembo made those too, and they were based on these. So, joke's on you, fanboys. You guys wanna buy these? Just kidding, you can't have them. Finally, they tackled another big aspect of high-speed handling, and a major factor in this Civic's time attack success. The aerodynamics. Because the Spoon team couldn't spend a ton of dough on big horsepower, like a lot of their competition, they did everything they could to increase downforce and cornering speed while minimizing drag. It looks tamer than a lot of other time attack cars, but all this aero is sick. Also, check this out. You wanna be nervous? This seam right here where it meets the bumper is sealed off with a rubber gasket to keep any air from seeping through. Even the TC's tiniest little gap right here can reduce the splitter's effectiveness by 25%. So much so that Dai said he could feel a difference after they sealed it. The splitter extends into a flat under tray beneath the engine compartment, which means that air can't come up through the bottom like it normally would. Instead, the hood is vented, the windshield tray is removed, and air can escape over the windshield. Diffusers at the side of the splitters help smooth airflow around the edges. This tall vertical plate in front of the tire, it helps make a vortex that works with the side skirts to keep air from sneaking under the car on the sides. All of this maintains a high pressure zone of air above and around the car to create downforce. <laughs> You don't break records by only giving 50%. So the sick aero action continues all the way to the back. That flat carbon fiber under tray extends the full length of the car. That's the holy grail of reducing turbulence and lift. 
A rear diffuser creates a larger space at the back of the car for all that air to rush into. That creates a Venturi effect that sucks air through the bottom even more quickly. That helps create a full 360 degree zone of higher pressure all around the car. Canards, which are these little plates on the rear bumper, direct air up towards the big old wing. Now you already know a big old wing for making big old down for us, baby. But the bigger it is, the more drag it creates. So this one isn't huge to make as little drag as possible. None of this stuff is that complicated or expensive. In fact, when I asked Aaron how they knew to do all this stuff, he was like, eh, it's just basically stuff everybody knows. And I was like, right, yeah, y'all dude. Spoon's formula worked and their chains is shaved three seconds off the car's original lap time. But as crazy as all this arrow is, it is by no means the craziest thing about this car. Trust fall. Hey, it's not that bad. It's actually nice. <laughs> Okay, I know what you're wondering. Why is the driver's seat in the freaking center? Well, for one, it improves the car's weight distribution, and two, it gets a lot of attention. After the engine, the driver is the second heaviest thing in the car. Since the engine is up front, it makes sense to move the driver as far back as possible. While left to right, weight distribution doesn't make as much difference to handling. The team looked at the Civic's flat rear floor and figured it wouldn't take much more effort to put him right in the middle and make people go, what? So I'm sitting here, basically, almost to where the back seat used to be, a foot and a half behind normal. It's actually not that weird. It's very roomy, and I like it very much. The K-Tune Billet Racing Cable Shifter is mounted on the left because Dai is Japanese and feels more comfortable using that hand to row gears, but it can easily be moved to the right if some left-handed driver, hello, if he wanted to go have a try driving it. As a very nice added bonus, the center of the car is the safest place that a driver can be. They didn't even have to put full door bars in the roll cage because Dai is so far away from the sides. Less roll cage equals less weight, which equals more speeds, which equals more trophies, which equals more monies, which equals more babies. <laughs> a MoTeC dash display shows all the important info and otherwise it's your typical sparse race car interior with a very rare spoon steering wheel and seat. This is by far the coolest startup we've ever done on this show. Yeah! I was excited to just sit in this seat! Pull me out! Can front wheel drive be faster than everything else? The current global time attack record holding Civic proves that it can be. Back in the 90s golden era of import drag racing, the Civics and CRXs built by Papadakis Racing and Bergenholtz Racing proved that front wheel drive doesn't deserve a bad rap. We just forgot about it for a while there. Then Spoon showed up with this simple Civic Type R that didn't make a ton of power or cost a ton to build and broke a record no one thought would fall for a long time. It reminded people that there's no such thing as wrong wheel drive. Big thanks to Aaron and all the dudes from Spoon. Thanks to Papadakis for letting us shoot in your shop. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Donut Media. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at James Pumphrey. If you wanna buy some donut merch, go to donutmedia.com. Sign up for our mailing list to get 10% off your first order. If you wanna learn more about Spoon, check out this episode of my other show, Up to Speed, which airs every Thursday. If you wanna learn how to go fast, cheap, check out this episode of Nolan's show. A lot of new stuff coming. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. I love you.